Hey everyone, welcome back. In the previous lecture, we talked about how to identify target users. This step is critical, since it clarifies who you are building the product for. In many cases, a problem will be solved differently for different user types. That's why defining a target user makes us focus on addressing the needs of that specific segment of users. For instance, imagine that you are building a graphic design platform for casual users who has nothing to do with the design industry and who need to put together a quick presentation or social media graphics. This design platform would look very different than if you were building it for professional designers. This is because the professional designers have very different needs and goals, such as creating crisp professional designs and icons. A new product would need to help them accomplish these goals. We have a user personas tool to encourage the product and other teams to build empathy around target users and focus on their needs, problems, and motivations. A user persona is a fictional person made up based on information about real people who might use your product. Let's go through the main segments that make up a user persona. Actually, we already started discussing these segments in the previous lecture, when we talked about how we could slice the audience. We said that we could use the following parameters to define a customer segment – problems, goals, motivations, as well as demographics. We will use all these segments to describe the persona. We start with personal details, such as short biography, photograph, and name. It's also good to incorporate a real quote from users you've met during user research. In addition, you can include the description of the user. Together with the quote, it can add more colors to the overall picture of that user and, as a result, help us empathize with the user more deeply. At the same time, you don't need to include a thorough description of the imaginary individual's life here. Focus on highlighting key details relevant to your product. Please avoid including extra information that doesn't affect your product. Next are demographic details, such as age, marital status, gender, income, etc. Next we include goals and motivations that the user is facing and that relate to your product. We also want to describe frustrations, challenges, or pain points that the user is facing now. And lastly, it's important to include behavioral details about how the persona tends to act when using the product. Please note that the information about the goals, motivations, frustrations, challenges, and behaviors is crucial for the persona's description. Without this information, you won't be able to create a product that will resonate with your customers and help to solve their problems. That's why we empathize discovering what user problems are and what motivates them to perform certain tasks. Let me illustrate this idea by showing you this image. These are two people who have similar profiles based on demographic criteria. We can barely look at these pictures to understand how the needs and wants of these two personas are different. So please remember that personas shouldn't be about demographics in the first place. Instead, they must be about the problems and challenges people face. And on that note, please also remember that personas are not user groups or segments. A persona is a singular user derived from the bigger user group, who has specific details and important features of that group. Don't forget that we use personas in product development as a tool that helps the product team build up empathy for real people who will be using a product. And a group of users is too impersonal and challenging to keep in mind when creating a product. Now let's speak a bit about the logistics of creating a user persona and discuss when and how to make them and how many personas you should create for a product. When to create personas. In short, as soon as possible. I like to create a draft of the persona even before I've started user research, just based on my initial assumptions about a target user of a product I'm working on. And later on, when I have insights about users from the user research, I come back to a persona profile and make changes. That's what we will be doing here in the program. I'll ask you to create a persona based on your current assumptions and online research you did about a problem you will be solving with your course project. And later on, once you have insights from the customer interviews, you will make changes in the persona's file. The next question is, where do we create the persona? You can use different software for this. One example is Miro, which I've already mentioned when we talked about tools you can use to organize brainstorming sessions to find an idea for the course project. Miro has a pre-built template for describing your personas. You can use this template or make modifications as you seem fit. 
Another software you can use is Uexpressia. It provides a set of online tools for visualizing customer experience, including designing user personas. It is straightforward to create a persona there. You will get a persona's template, which you can modify and add new sections from a catalog. It's up to you which one of these tools you want to use for creating personas for the project. For the Just Do project, I've decided to use Uexpressia. I'll include my user personas file in the resources section of this video. And final question, how many personas to create? Of course, my answer here will be it depends on your product and industry. Every product will likely have several personas to cover parts of product functionality. For example, when I was developing a trading platform, we had the following three primary personas. Trader, responsible for deal capture processes. Operator, who was in charge of deals execution activities like planning and scheduling of their vessels to transport cargo from a seller to buyer. And finally, we had a back office manager, whose main responsibilities were to process goods receipts and goods issue operations, invoices, and other documents. Okay, now let's recap. A user persona is a tool we use in product management to encourage product and other teams to build empathy around target users and focus on their needs, problems, and motivations. A user persona is a fictional person made up based on information about real people who might use your product. It's not a user group or a segment of users. Every persona description includes personal details, demographic details, goals, motivations, frustrations, challenges, pain points, and behaviors of users when dealing with your product. We can create the persona based on our assumptions about the target user and then refine the description after conducting user research. We can use different tools to create a persona. Such software as Miro or Uexpressia will do the job. And finally, every product will likely have several personas to cover parts of product functionality. Okay, that's it for this lecture, and I'll see you in the next video.